Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we will get ourselves on the rock and roll. I think it is time to begin. Um, thank you all so much for coming this evening. Um, it's uh, it's really awesome that uh, that you've all taken the time out of what I'm sure is a, a hectic lockdown schedule to come and uh, come and watch this interview. Um, From Ponds Forge to the Top of the World is uh, the title of this this chat. And uh, yeah, it's going to be another really exciting one. So I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, as always, um, I'm going to begin with a cheeky little video. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I tell you what, it gives me enormous pleasure to uh, to welcome to our, our trampolining chat tonight uh, this amazing young man. Um, his stratospheric career has seen him achieve what um, was once thought of as an impossible dream to coach. Uh, a British trampoline athlete to Olympic medal glory. Um, a dream come true not only for him uh, and his athlete, but for the whole British trampoline community. But whilst his accolade is uh, you know, thoroughly impressive, it doesn't do him justice for who he is as a person and uh, what else he has achieved within his career. Being a larger than life character in both stature and demeanor, this ex national level trampoline athlete has worked his career um, to give back to the sport of trampolining and education in sport. He gives tirelessly uh, of his time across Great Britain and indeed the whole of the world uh, to share his knowledge and his passion uh, for trampoline coaching with gymnasts and coaches of all levels uh, for the purposes of just pushing the sport forward as a whole. Ladies and gentlemen, I tell you what, it gives me 
great pleasure in welcoming the gentle giant that is Mr. Paul Greaves. Paul, in you come, dear boy. You can turn your uh, camera on now. <laughs> How was that? I, I'm gobsmacked over that video. <laughs> like, some of those photographs of like, social media has got a lot to answer for. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness and that video oh dearie me you know it, it's yeah I, that was that was a really cool video I'm, I'm, I'm like you know that was a really special actually I, I loved it it's uh, it's definitely amazing the internet is a, is a very wonderful world if you choose to live in it for a little while it's amazing what you can find and you uh type in your name you should try everyone should try that one time just pop your name into the uh, into the old google and see what happens it's um an, an interesting and cathartic process <laughs> 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 I'll tell you what, Paul, there's loads of um, excitement about you coming on um, to uh, this this series of interviews. It's uh, it's really exciting to have you on board. And uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so pleased that uh, all of the people who are, who are going to have come this evening um, and who are going to watch this video in the future have got the opportunity to, to meet you and uh, and to hear what you've got to say. Um, to everybody, um, or everybody that's in the, uh, in the chat tonight, um, if you've got any questions for Paul, stick them in the, uh, in the chat window, then let me know if there's anything that you'd like to ask Paul. And if it's, um, if it's not been covered by my, my questions, then I'll unmute you and, uh, and you can ask him yourself. Hey, presto. So, uh, yeah, Paul, um, as I said, thanks for coming to this interview. I tell you what, you must be one of the most interviewed people in, uh, in trampolining right now since the Olympics. Um, how, how have you taken your role as uh, international British trampoline spokesman? How's that role going for you? <laughs> um, it's been really interesting and um, just opened up so many doors and I've been so lucky that, to travel the world um, and go to so many different countries to um, sort of share the love of, of trampoline really and also um you know it's something that i've dedicated my life to and i'm really passionate about not not just trampoline as well but coaching um and yeah it's been a phenomenal um experience um but yeah lots of interviews and lots of lots of fun as well i think you, you probably summarize that in some of the photographs um yeah i i i think um on my facebook status it, it says something like about um achieving excellence with fun and that's something that i've always tried to do um yeah, so it's, it's been a phenomenal experience over these last, uh, well, I say these last few years, actually it's been a phenomenal experience in, in its entirety. Uh, I've got I've got so many things to talk to you about. I mean, you, you talk about in the entirety, your, your whole career is just um, a kaleidoscope of loads of really different and really exciting things. I mean, how, I, I have no idea how I'm going to try and encapsulate all of this, um, all of this into, into one, one hour interview. So yeah, I'll, I'll do my best. Um, before we talk about the obvious uh, high profile accolades and all that kind of stuff that you've achieved, we'll, uh, we'll backtrack a little bit and talk about how you got involved in trampolining in the, in the first instance. <clears throat> So you uh, you attended Meadowhead Secondary School, I believe, uh, in Sheffield from 92 to 97. Now that dates you, doesn't it? <laughs> we, we're, you and me together, my dear boy, we're both getting old, I'm afraid. Um, and as a, as a young year seven pupil, you were given your first opportunity to step foot on a, on a trampoline um, by taking part in the trampolining lessons with your, with your then PE teacher, Mrs. Jenny Boker. Um, who perhaps could be held responsible for the rest of your career? <laughs> can um, can you remember what it felt like when you when you first you know got on a trampoline and what those sessions were like and how they made you feel? I remember the very first um, PE lesson that I had. It was in Year Seven and it was in the South Building, and we we were actually in the school um, hall. We weren't in the gymnasium, and the trampolines wouldn't fit in, uh, so they had to go in a diagonal line. So three trampolines in a diagonal line, um, and um, Mrs. Balkers. Uh, was known for um sort of her expertise sort of in, in trampoline and a love of trampoline and i've never been on one um not even at the beach or in on, on the garden one or anything like that um but i'd done martial arts when i was younger so i did jujitsu so I, I was used to like doing the rolls and the jumps and things like that um and i just got on this trampoline and it was the feeling of um flying and i was like oh my goodness like this is amazing like I'm just jumping up and down and um you know i i didn't really know what i was doing um and yeah I, it was just it was just amazing i remember that very first session in southfield and it was in uh it was in september it was a cold wet rainy day pretty much like today it's been actually and um i just remember going i want to do more of that like i, I just i want to do more so i joined the after school club and yeah and then the rest is history really did, did you have any inkling at all um as to what was going to come in the years to follow and that 
you know you would enjoy the glittering career that you have within the within the sport of trampolining no my my entire goal was to compete at the sheffield schools championships that's all <laughs> i wanted to do um, and that was a big thing absolutely for me. nothing like yeah. setting your setting your targets nice and high to start off with <laughs> no because I, I, I didn't even know trampolining was a sport so i didn't i didn't think it was a, a proper sport like i, I didn't understand it because i'd never been exposed to it um, I knew gymnastics was because I saw that in the Olympics and things like that, but I'd never seen trampolining on the TV. So I'd never, I didn't, I didn't know what it was. Um, so then when I started going and I, I you know, I think um, it was Mrs. Barker that basically said you should go and join a club and, you know, um, I, and I joined the club and then I started doing competitions. And then I got spotted by a, a, a club, that, a local club that was producing like, um, Great Britain athletes. So, you know, going out to World Age Championships back in 1992 in Canada and, um, you know, producing athletes that were sort of, you know, getting up there in the podiums at, at British level. And they asked me to go. And that's when it got, started to get a bit serious. And I realised, oh, actually, I can do this. Um, you know, and I probably joined a little bit late um, in terms of, of the, the club and, and, and everything and where I was at. And I, but in all fairness, I think you can join later and you can do it. But my passion was always in coaching. I knew that from 14. Have, um, have you ever had the opportunity to go back to uh, Meadowhead and thank Mrs. Boker per personally? I did. I, <laughs> she, <laughs> she hates being on camera. I like, absolutely hates it. And um, she retired and I just couldn't let it go because... Like without her, I wouldn't have been anything like, you know, I wouldn't have even been on a trampoline or, you know, she she inspired me to to push myself and, and go forward and, and to challenge myself. And um, yeah, I basically sorted out local BBC to go and we set up um, the cameras for a retirement and I got Bryony there as well. And we got all the kids in there, all the staff were in on it. And it was her last day and she came in and she thought it was the school recording. She didn't realise it was the BBC and she was going, you naughty boy, you naughty boy, <laughs> like telling me off <laughs> live in the BBC. It was hilarious. It was so funny. Um, but yeah, she, she doesn't like being on the camera, but um, I couldn't let her go without, um, without a, a good send off. Oh, brilliant. Um, if it's OK with you, Paul, um, obviously I've done a, a, a whole bunch of research um, and whatnot for, uh, for this interview. So um, I'm just going to share my screen again uh, with everybody um, and uh, I'll, I'll let you enjoy the next, uh, the next couple of minutes. Yesterday, by sheer coincidence, flashback. Hello then, Paul. It's me from the past here speaking to you. Um, I've managed to track down one of your uh, esteemed blasts from the past uh, in the form of uh, your first trampoline coach and PE teacher at your old secondary school, Meadowhead Secondary, Mrs. Jenny Boker. Um, I thought that it would be great uh, to hear firsthand how you got on in those first few clumsy years of trampolining. And, uh, and learn exactly how horrible you were to your teachers at school. <laughs> hello, Jenny. Uh, thank you for joining me today to talk about Paul. Hello, hello. <laughs> it's, uh, it's really brilliant that you've, uh, that you've, that you've come today. Um, I've done a, done a whole bunch of research about Paul um, for this interview, and uh, he has been quoted in lots of different places. You know, the internet's a wonderful place, isn't it? But he's been quoted in lots of different places as uh, crediting you um, with being responsible for his trajectory within uh, trampolining and for being such a, an influential and positive role model for the sport while he was at school. I mean, that's amazing. Well, what, what was Paul really like in class uh, and during those few Paul years like, at, him, oh, uh, at school, in your school trampoline club? Yeah, Paul was a little boy. <laughs> Had just come above the trampoline. In those days, the trampolines were really, really old. Not like the trampolines now with all the pads and uh, you know all the safety measures in those days the trampolines were where the springs were all on show oh but my yeah, goodness Paul, oh my I, goodness. Uh, that's a really old trampoline <laughs> it is a very old trampoline we had old trampolines but yes uh, my passion was uh, one of my sports was trampoline in uh, when i uh, finished at uh, uni and when i went to jordan thorpe school as it was then i really um 
wanted to introduce it to everybody and so had lunchtime and after school clubs and uh, Paul came along he was the only boy that came to the trampoline club <laughs> but that did that did not deter Paul at all I mean most boys uh, uh, you know 30 odd years ago trampolining wasn't uh, on the curriculum for them but he came along he loved gymnastics he loved dance and he uh, loved trampolining and he took to it like a duck to water, loved it. And um, I loved teaching him. Paul was such, oh, what an incredible boy he was. Uh, his personality, he, he just learned very, very quickly. And this is great that I'm getting my own back now to talk about him, <laughs> seeing that he surprised me three years ago uh, when I retired. So this is quite good that I'm getting my uh, own back on him now. Uh, I think that it's amazing that the power that, that sport, uh, and this is any sport, the power that it's got to empower and uh, positively affect individuals from all walks of life um, and to facilitate people to, to do things and achieve things that they never, ever thought was possible. No. Um, did, did you have any idea, uh, you know, in the, in the short time that you two had together at school that you would influence him so powerfully and, and set him on his path to uh, achieve the amazing success that, uh, that he's enjoyed. Yeah, I could never believe what Paul's been able to achieve over these years. I mean, when he was uh, in my trampoline club, yes, we entered competitions. We went to, uh, you know, Yorkshire competitions. He, he represented uh, Yorkshire and then the Nationals, etc. But uh, when he left school, who would have believed that he would have run his own trampoline club that was great in uh, Sheffield because I was able then to pass on uh, my, you know, my uh, inspiring trampolinist onto him. And then for him to, you know, become a coach at Sheffield um, Hallam and then to become the most amazing coach that he's become now. Uh, no, I would never, ever have believed that just coming to trampoline club every lunchtime and after school and teaching him would have actually had this effect. Absolutely amazing. Mm. So obviously we're uh, we're interviewing Paul right now, um, it's, it, which is super cool. Have you uh, have you got uh, any personal message that you'd like to to, to say to Paul? To Paul, Paul, what can I say about you? You are the loveliest, loveliest person I think that uh, I have ever come across. I've never known such a positive, smiley person. Whatever you get your teeth into, you make sure that you actually uh, see it through. If somebody says no to you, you say yes back and you make sure that whatever you want to do, you you actually do it. And yes, I, I am so proud of the... You are just an inspiration. At school, if I say the name Paul Greaves, everybody knows who you are. In Sheffield, everybody knows who you are. You are just, oh, a wonderful, a wonderful person. Yeah, lovely memories of Paul. I'll never forget him. Oh, that's absolutely brilliant. Jenny, brilliant. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much for meeting up with me today. I, re I really, really do appreciate it. It's been a pleasure. Well, there we go, Paul. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed that, dear boy. And uh, yeah, now it's back to the interview. End of flashback. Can't believe you got that. <laughs> yeah, honestly, she was she was amazing, absolutely amazing. She used to drive us. I mean, you know, she used to drive us around uh, in a car sometimes to get to competitions and everything because it was only a small team of us, and we'd have to get all our. We couldn't get in the car unless we got our written permission and. You know, she, she. I remember her sending me home one day because um, she realised that I forged my signature, forged my parents' signature <laughs> on the slip, <laughs> and she sent me home. Um, yeah, yeah, she was brilliant. She was absolutely brilliant. Uh, she, it was, it was brilliant to be able to to meet up with her, and uh, and she was so happy to agree to. Uh, like you said, she she really didn't like being on camera at all. <laughs> she hates it. She hates it. Yeah. Uh, well, well, I'm sure that both she uh, and, and I hope that you enjoyed that. Um, if it's okay, let's uh, let's talk about your your career as a as a trampoline athlete. Um, what was your progress as you were jumping in uh, Jenny's uh, sessions, and and obviously uh, as you started to move um, outside your school uh, lessons and into the club environment, what was your progress as a as an athlete yourself like? So my first um, schools competition I went to, and I I, I won it. It was only the local Sheffield schools one, and then I went to the um, 
uh, the regional schools competition and I came last um, <laughs> and it was just but I was all right with that because I didn't I just loved trampoline and it didn't really matter that I came last the fact that I was competing was great um, and then the following year I joined this new club which um, you know had these sort of great really good athletes um and I didn't realize sort of what I was doing I was just listening to what they were telling me and and improving and I didn't realize how much improving I went from being last at the regional schools uh to winning the the schools the following year and then I was Yorkshire champion and then I competed at the men's event in the Yorkshire competition I was only like 13 and I've, I've won the men's competition and beat all the older people um and so yeah and I, I got to sort of a national level back like back then fairly quickly uh, I moved up through the grades within like 18 months um and started competing um sort of nationally and then on it, both in the age group and at that time you could also compete senior as well if you hit the qualifying scores so I compete so I hit the qualifying scores in at under 15s and I was still competing in the men's as well um so yeah it was it it was that but I, I sort of knew that there was su such a gap between like myself and like Lee Brearley, who was the Olympian that went in 2000, there was such a massive gap and I knew I didn't want it like that. Uh, it was different for me. I, I, I loved coaching. I absolutely loved coaching. So all the way through, even at the age of 14, I would help out in club to just um, to help the, the little ones come through. Um, and so, yeah, I would, I would have like my, my small group that I would work with um, to help with coaching. And I just, I just loved it. But yeah, I, I did a, I did a couple of, um, open internationals as well which was good fun um and the mexican coach actually is a good friend of mine um and we did our last competition together back in prague at the um friendship cup and he um he basically we got an equal score and on count back he got third place um it, it was always it was always really bitter he always reminds me of it whenever i see him at an international he's like i remember that uh, you know i got on the podium but no it's um I, i've forgiven him now um, so uh, you attended Sheffield Hallam University studying a BSc in sports science with coaching, um, which you which you obviously graduated from with honours. Well done, dear boy. Um, and you, you chose that because you wanted to know more about the science of coaching and uh, nutrition and um, exercise physiology and uh, psychology and all that kind of stuff that goes into uh, being an amazing coach. Um, did did your own personal trampoline continue while you were at uni as well? Yeah, it did. I, I actually made a comeback um, because um, a friend of mine, um, basically, he he was coming, he was like training. I think he he went to World Age Groups and did synchro with with James Higgins. So it was he went, he was it was a good level, and then he came back a little bit later, uh, and he he asked if I wanted to do synchro. So I did synchro. Um, I think I came back in two thousand six, and we won the British Championships. So I was a two thousand six British champion uh, for synchro. Um, and then I decided to do the university competitions. So I did the books competitions and um, I, could, I wasn't eligible to compete the first year or eligible to medal the first year, but I actually won um, <laughs> on the comeback. So I, I, but I was competing as a guest, so I couldn't, um, couldn't do that. But yeah, I was like varsity champion and stuff. And that was like having seven years out. So my last nationals was in 2000 in Sheffield where I came eighth. Um, so I got into the top eight. Um, and then I just stopped after that completely and then ended up coming back at university. So, yeah, because I went to uni when I was older, when I was 26. Um, did, uh, did uni work kind of tend to get in, get in the way a little bit of, uh, you know, the really important business of, uh, of bouncing up and down? <laughs> yeah, it did get in the way. I, I remember having to do like, and, and you should never do this, anybody, just to point out. But I remember like staying up and doing all nighters in the learning centre and like <laughs> being in the library till like 5 a.m. in the morning. It's not the way to do it. Um, I, I have to hold my hand up, full disclosure, and go, yep, I, uh, I remember yeah. that. But it, it was always that trampolining, you know, doing the trampolining had got in the way of doing the proper library stuff. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I know. And, and I had coaching as well because I ran my own club whilst I was at uni because I, I went to uni when I was 26 uh, because I wanted to get more knowledge around um, around sort of like the sports science and how to develop people and how to understand biomechanics, nutrition, psychology. So I was using the athletes. They were benefiting from my learning at the university because I'd come back and I'd say, right, let's do some visualization imagery and let's try it and let's see if it'll work or let's do a better informed conditioning program because I understand about physiology now and, and sort of muscle development. So yeah, I used it as a, um, a learning experience and, and an applied learning experience as well. 
Brilliant. Um, just uh, we'll, we'll take a question out of the chat box, if that's all right. Harriet's asked the question. Uh, Harriet, if you'd like to unmute yourself, my lovely, um, you can pop that one in there right now. It's a perfect, perfect place to go. Uh, so between when you were competing at schools and then competing at uni, did is there a school that you, uh, sorry, a skill that you did that you don't see anymore? My favourite skill, and you hardly see it at all anymore, and that was... Uh, uh, double back straight so I loved double straight to finish my routine I always finished on double straight so when I, when I finished that is <laughs> so, but yeah do, like double back straight so I, I, I loved it yeah brilliant yeah. brilliant good, good question Harriet thank you very much um okay Paul so prior to attending uni at, at uh, Sheffield Hallam uh, you had a full-time job you mentioned that you um you attended university a little bit later you didn't go straight out of college um you had a full-time job working within a primary school uh which came off the back of you volunteering at that school to to help with the kids with reading and writing how um, do you know all this <laughs> how do you know this seriously <laughs> Uh, I, I've, I've got my sources, you know. That's not on social media. <laughs> it's, yeah, uh, it, it's, it's always good to talk. Uh, you, you know me. I, I talk to everybody. So it's, um, yeah, it's all cool. <laughs> Every, everybody out there should be worried. <laughs> <laughs> I'm worried where he's got his source of information from. Don't know where this is going. <laughs> so you, you remained uh, heavily active within the folds of the, 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 the trampoline community. And then at some point, uh, you came up with this this crazy idea of starting up your own trampling club, which you did when you were 24, um, and Abbey Flyers was born. You know, talk to me about that. How did that come about? So I, I basically set the I set a club up when I was 18, but it was ne never really anything. It was just more of an after school club. So we did it as like a school um, activity. So we didn't really set, establish the club until I was about 24. Um, and that's when we moved into um, a proper sort of sports facility. Um, but basically I was I was working in primary schools uh, like I said like I said a long time so I was working full-time um to obviously earn money um because trampoline wasn't paid it was just voluntary um and it was voluntary actually until um, until 2010 I didn't take a penny I, I was putting money back into it so so yeah it was, it was voluntary but it was hard work it was it was because I was spending running a club as well it's not easy like running a club's hard work um, and constant. So I was a young 24 year old um, that was driven and passionate, full time job and running an entire club. It was um, it was stressful, but it was incredible. Um, and I was just so driven. I just wanted to. Everybody told me no. And that's what Jenny said in the thing. Everybody kept saying, no, you'll not you, you'll not do that. And it was already like clubs around and clubs that got facilities and you know, and I was like, no, I'm going to do it. I will do it. And every time somebody said no, the word no meant go. And it was just go and find another way. Um, and that's what that's what I did. Well, that, that drive quickly led Abbey Flyers to establish itself as one of the, the, the leading performance and recreational trampoline clubs across the Sheffield and Derbyshire area. Um, you know, and, and indeed the whole of the UK um, operating from multiple venues across Sheffield, including Ponds Forge Sports Centre, um, which is where the title of this uh, th this talk has come from, and of course where you had access to some some great facilities. I mean, I remember there's a, there was a, a diving boards and a foam pit with overhead rigs and all sorts of things at Ponds Forge, um, and I, I even I even remember coming to visit you um, at one point and and having a cheeky blast into the into the diving diving pit. It was great, great fun. Yeah, it's good for. I mean, we're really lucky in Sheffield to have so many amazing facilities. Like it's, um, you know, we've got the English Institute of Sport, Ponds Forge. We've got amazing facilities here, um, and you know, I, I'm sort of like really grateful for that. But we couldn't get in straight away. It took us ages to get to actually get access into some of those facilities. So we had to do it um, in after school clubs and things like that, and in school sports halls to start off with, and just gradually build and build. So you produced multiple um, performers, you know, high level performers out of uh, Abbey Flyers, uh, you know, across the various venues that the club operated from, including, uh, and of course, amongst many others, people like Nick Davies, uh, Phil mm -hmm. Jackson, Lucy Horan, um, you know, uh, Lucy, who you coached uh, back to, you know, um, podium level at, at, at British level uh, after she, you know, broke her neck in a training accident at another club, you know, so uh, an amazing amount of support to, to her and, Wow. 
Um, and then, of course, m multiple British champion, multiple European champion, uh, world champion and Olympic silver medalist, Bryony Page. Uh, no one's ever heard of her, of course, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what what was the training ethos like at Abbey Flyers? How how did you how did you run on a like a session by session basis? What was your ethos? What was your message? Well, one of the key things um, before I actually took Bryony on was I really had to consider whether I was going to take her on or not. So it wasn't just a done deal. It wasn't a case that she was going to come to Sheffield, um, at, you know, for university and I would coach her. Um, I needed to make sure that she fitted into into our environment and that she wasn't going to disrupt that. Um, so the, the culture of, that we created at, at Abbey Flyers was around sort of like, um, you know, a, a, a one team approach and um, a supportive developmental progressive club that, um, that provided people the opportunity to shine. And it doesn't matter what your personality was or anything like that. You know, it was a case of um, almost like, you know, it's your journey. You're an individual. Um, and actually a lot of clubs and I'm not I'm not sort of saying that this is wrong a lot of clubs don't do that a lot of clubs were very much like um this is our way this is our way of doing it and you have to fit into that and that didn't sit happy with me because I've never really been a person that's fitted in anywhere um and I've always felt like I was an individual and so I wanted people to be able to feel part of a team while still being themselves and that's I think what Bryony really needed uh, more than anything because she she didn't fit in with she doesn't but she didn't need to fit in she you know she she's who she is and I think that's where she just came to our sessions and I think she realized she could be totally 100% Bryony Page um but again I had to really consider because um I've got some really good good kids at the time um phenomenal talents and I was like I don't want to upset that because I've already got this going really well and I'm actually not up for just taking somebody else on that would disrupt that so it was a it was a transition period um but I think she liked it and I think she did all right <laughs> Hashtag understatement. Um, yeah. so, so Abbey Flyers continued to grow and enjoyed success, um, you know, in terms of training, in terms of number of gymnasts attending, um, competitions, all that kind of stuff. And then the opportunity came for you to amalgamate Abbey Flyers with uh, Sheffield City Council and um, look to jointly develop a, a purpose-built trampoline and gymnastics centre. And, you know, what an amazing opportunity. But it's it's a bit of a sad story, isn't it? Because it didn't it didn't all come out like that. I mean, what, what became of Abbey Flyers? Uh, it dissolved, it disappeared, and it was the biggest disaster of my career. <laughs> and I can laugh about it now, so it's fine. But I couldn't laugh about it um, at the time. It was it, it broke me a little bit. Yeah, um, it was an ultimate low, a really really bad low uh, in in my career. Uh, basically, we. Um, we got funding uh, to build a purpose-built facility, everybody's dream, um, and my dream became a nightmare. So um, basically we lost uh, the entire club. I lost my coaching team uh, and, you know, we were basically promised the world and uh, just it, it didn't deliver. Like, um, unfortunately, the company that had taken on um, the programme couldn't run it, so had to hand it back to City Council and... Basically, we were left in limbo and handed over all my equipment. So my 12 trampolines were gone. Um, my um, entire rec base had gone, which which funded and fueled the, um, the high performance end. Uh, and I was that close to just walking away from it completely. And it was Brian and a couple of others that just kept me going. Um, somebody called Phil Jackson as well. Uh, they just kept me going and had to stay strong for them. So I agreed that I would just coach that group and, you know, I did it for a couple of years. Um, but then I walked, I walked away from the club itself and just decided that I just wanted to coach that group. And then I would go into lecturing and, and work at Sheffield Hallam. So, so yeah, it was a disaster. So <laughs> you have to have your disasters to appreciate your highs. So, yeah. Absolutely. Um, uh, obviously some, some, heartache and, and soul searching to be done during that uh, that that period of time but but the story of having your own gym to call you know home it didn't end there did it um talk to me about the the final leg of that kind of journey um and where you finished up in you know the amazing awesome purpose-built gymnastics and trampoline facility at grave sports center yeah so basically another company took it on uh, but i wasn't part of that company and i didn't want to be part of it necessarily to start off with um and I supported it all the way along the way um 
in, in terms of like the development of the, the facility and stuff like that. And now we've got um, an Olympic performance center in Sheffield where, um, you know, we have four uh, trampolines in a podium style setup. So it's, it simulates like a, a podium, like a major championships event. It's 15 meters tall, so it's massively high. And then it's a split roof. So you've got the gymnastics area on one side and the trampoline area on the other side. We've got five sunken trampolines, a um, foam pit, rig systems. Um, so basically that was my legacy that I've, I've sort of left to the city that, you know, hopefully now, um, you know, somebody else from Sheffield might get the opportunity or surrounding areas might get the opportunity to um, experience things a little bit easier than I had it, <laughs> fingers crossed, rather than setting 12 trampolines up every session and putting 12 trampolines down every session. Oh, um, I, I, I remember doing that. That was yeah. great fun. It was so, so hard. So, so yeah, now hopefully um, it's, it's time for that next generation to, um, to have the opportunity to do that. And I'll happy, happily support and everything. So, so yeah, but it's an amazing, amazing facility. And I still coach out there now. Uh, Brian and I go in, um, or we've been lucky enough to still be training during lockdown, which is great because uh, she's on the elite athlete, um, so uh, elite athlete list. So we get to go in, and yeah, it's it's a bit weird just being, you know, just being us, and sometimes Pete's, you know, in there as well. So yeah, it's it's an amazing facility, and really proud of of what it's what it is and what it will be in the future. Yeah. Oh, amazing, amazing. I'm I'm glad that 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 part of the story had a happy ending in the end. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, right. Let's get the elephant in the room out of the way. Uh, let's talk about the Olympics. Woo! <laughs> um, obviously, a competition accolade that that so many coaches and athletes have have dreamed of. Um, you know, for ever since trampolining has been part of the uh, part of the Olympic movement, uh, and indeed from before that. Um, you know, obviously, a certain special female athlete um, achieved that in the in Rio in two thousand and sixteen. Um, and it's now cemented her place and, of course, your place within the annals of um, both British and international trampoline history. I mean, wow. Um, just, I tell you what, it was just a, what a phenomenal experience it must have been. We'll, we'll talk a bit more about how that felt in the meantime. But what happened when you met Bryony for the first time? Talk to me about that. You know, she walks in through a door. You've never met her before. And uh, she went... Come on, Governor, let's, uh, let's have a bounce. Let's, uh, let's see how this goes. Well, I'd met her at the uh, World Class Programme because so I've got Nick Davies um, and other, a couple of others that were on national team. So I'd seen her, but not really talked. I'd never really spoke to her. I basically covered covered her for one session and I think mastered her at an international uh, once before, but she didn't really speak. Um, so I didn't really <laughs> know her. Um, and she was quite um, quite a quirky character. Um so, but very nice, very nice. And then um, she came in um, to the door. You do realise how tall you are, don't you? Well, I'm six foot, but like like Mrs. Barker said, I, I was the smallest in my year group up until I was being 17. I was five foot three when I left school and now I'm six foot one. <laughs> so, but yeah, um, so when Bryony first came to Sheffield, um, she walked through the doors and I'd only got, it was, I'd got um, a, a session just for Nick and Phil because they were prepping to go to world age. Um, and so that it was just me and with them, we we're doing a bit of extra training and she came in and usually like training had been going brilliant. And Bryony came in and she, she came with her mum and dad, uh, warmed up and I just said to warm up however you normally warm up and, you know, we'll just get going. Uh, and she just fitted straight in, but Nick had a disastrous, um, training session. It was like crash, crash, crash. And all I kept thinking was, oh my goodness, why would she want to join this club? Like when... <laughs> He could, you know, use the crash mat more than the actual trampoline. So, but um, but I think it was he was trying to impress Bryony, which was random. And anyway, we ended up as an amazing <laughs> training group, and she fitted straight in just immediately. And her mum said to me at the end of the session, she said, "We would not say this to Bryony because we don't want to influence her, but we really want her to come to you." Um, and I think we, it just, you know, and I get on really well with Bryony's parents as well. They're they're brilliant. Um, and yeah, it just. Just, she just fitted in perfectly. What, um, was, um, what was it like working with Bryony? You know, both in the, those first uh, early months, but obviously over the over the years that you've been you know, with each other. Um, how did you two come up with this amazing chemistry that just works so well and has proven so successful? Yeah, it was. <laughs> if if she's dead, tell you what I said. <laughs> I'm just thinking of some of the stuff she might have said. Um, yeah, it took time and. Um, it, to start off with it was very much 
me driving a program forward so usually I wouldn't have that with an established athlete it would be very much like a you know a, a supportive nature but she needed almost like a program putting together that she had to follow so we had to strip it right the way back and I took her all the way back to doing and this is somebody who could do triples and multiple twisting doubles and I took her back to doing front landings flat backs and half twist to front landings every session jump technique just foot footwork on a bouncing um posture work balance work and I just said if you're if you're on board with me you've got to go back and we've got to get your ABCs right you, you know the, the basics um and she was totally up for it and this is a, a girl who was a, a what I call a tariff basher she just because she could do loads of different skills just threw them all together but they were tricks um and so I said to her if you're going to get on board I know you've got European trials coming up I don't care about this year for worlds and everything you've just got to concentrate on training and getting the training right and then the rest will happen and she just totally committed to it um which you know so everybody else would be doing their like big full routines and Brian would be doing fronts flats half to fronts and connecting them with every single skill you know tuck back followed by front landing tuck back followed by flat back half to front um you know even to the point of like half out um followed by straight jump half out followed by flat back half out followed by half to front so all these different things um she just committed to and like that year the improvement that she made from sort of like just in, in 12 months was unbelievable and it was I, I could I knew what she needed to do before she came to me um I watched videos loads and loads of videos I analyzed what she was doing and I was like okay I, I know exactly what she needs um and it just catapulted her to success and just completely unlocked her potential and she ended up coming fourth at the world championships in 2010 so yeah and it, just her total dedication and commitment to going back to basics Awesome, awesome. Um, I, I remember that when when the Olympics were were, were being beamed around the world, uh, we had it being projected up onto the the gym wall um, at access, and we had we had sessions that were going on. <clears throat> And I remember I had an adult session that was uh, that was taking place, uh, and I, I you know introduced the session. I was like, "So we're going to be doing some jumping and da 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 da." da. And uh, the Olympics is going on right now, and you can see it being projected up over there. And uh, as much as I want to focus on you guys, it's your session, all that kind of stuff. When uh, when Bryony Page and Catherine School get up onto the trampoline, I am stopping, and we are watching it. <laughs> and um, and it was just it was just amazing. Um, yes. she, she you know Bryony got up and she did she did her routine. And I burst into floods of tears. Um, and everybody that was in the gym that, that knew about performance tramping, you know, that knew the difference between a good performance routine and a, and a you know, an also ran performance routine, you know, they're, they're still amazing. But if you can tell the difference, those of us that, that knew the difference, we were like, yep, boom, she's just done something really special. Uh, and of course, the judges agreed. And, you know, the rest is history, as they say. Um, it was, yeah, we were just over the moon. Um, you, you were up in the in the crowds, weren't you? Sitting with uh, with Bryony's parents. Um, yeah. What did those moments feel like for you, both before she competed, as, as she was jumping, as she was mid routine, and then once you know she'd finished and presented to the judges, and then that was that. How 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 did all that feel to you? So before she competed, as she walked into the gym, my heart was jumping out of my chest, like, and I was just thinking, God. If if I feel like this, like what must she feel like? So I was sat, I remember I was sat next to a mum and I was sat with my knees up, my feet were on the, the top of the chair in front. I was just sat cuddling my knees uh, because I couldn't physically sit up without want, not wanting to throw up. Um, <laughs> so, and just because I knew that I'd seen the training videos, um, I don't think she even knows this, I'd managed to get secret footage of her training um, in the podium area <laughs> when she was at the Olympics I got a secret camera set up but we'll not talk about that um, anyway um, but, and so I could see I was like she's on it like I know she's she's on it I hope she's not won the warm-up um, and then during sort of like the first routine I remember the, the set routine being good and solid and I was like brilliant and I remember the vol and I was like oh she's put herself in the grey area there that's going to be a challenge as to whether she gets in the final um, because I think it was just a little bit rushed and I knew not not what she was capable of. And then obviously when she got into the final, like I was just like, I was jumping up and down. It was like celebration. Then in the final, oh my goodness, I was like, doesn't matter. Made the final, doesn't matter. <laughs> Until she lined up and I was like, my God, it matters now. 
<laughs> and then, I, I mean, I just wanted her to, to do a clean routine. Um, and she did the triff. <laughs> and I, I was just, but I could even see it in her face before she started. Like, I can't, I'm not going to use the words that we use, but we even talked about the type of, you get in the final, you go for it. Like, because eighth or first, it's amazing. You go for it. So we, she'd done step up routines before and I could just see it in her face. She looked different from in the prelims. And I was like, she's here. And she just, like, that triff pike. Uh, I was like, right, okay. She's nailed that. Then the half-half went just... <laughs> and then at that moment, I was like, okay, this is it. And then as soon as she got to skill four, I was like, this is it. She's, she's, she's done it. Like, this is, and, and I just knew it's skill four. And I just sort of remember relaxing. She did the routine. Um, I'm getting goosebumps talking about it now. Um, I, I can tell you, I, I've got yeah. goosebumps. Listen to I'm properly on the edge of my it was, seat. It was unbelievable. And then she'd finished the routine and I just stood I was screaming, I was screaming. And then and then basically I just sat down and I was like, oh, mate. And I was like, that was big. I said, that was big. I think it's going to be a 55.5 plus potentially. And then the score went up and I was like, oh, my God, like, I don't want to watch the rest of the competition. And the next one up, and I was like... Of yeah, course, it, it, it took some time, didn't it? It took some time to find out that she had meddled. You know, she, she because she competed relatively early in her flight, um, she had to wait for other people to go. You know, people like uh, Lee Dan and Rosie McLennan and, and Hay Wenner, who were all pipped as possible winners um, before she was confirmed as being a, you know, a medalist. Did, did, did you, when, when did it start to, you know... So it was... <laughs> an Olympic medal was actually possible. Well, this sounds really awful. I don't mean it to be, but when she was in the position where she could be fourth, I was like, anything but fourth. I'd rather be fifth, sixth, seventh or eighth, but not fourth. She had fourth at World Championships, fourth at Europeans, fourth, 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 fourth. I was like, anything but fourth. Like, And then she was in fourth position. And then I was like, oh my God. And then obviously the next person went up and she beat them. And I was like, oh my God. And I, I just sobbed. I couldn't stop crying. Like, I, I just sobbed and sobbed and sobbed, like, for ages, absolutely ages. So, yeah, it was unbelievable. Oh, bless you. Bless and you. And a mum's mom, on, on the back saying, it's all right. She said, she's doing well. And I'm like, <laughs> just sobbed. Yeah, it was amazing. Oh, so, obviously, that was a, what an amazing achievement. And it was, you know, it's one that's, that's well and truly whisked you off your feet um you know and i don't think that your uh, your feet have touched the ground yet you know they're they're, they're still they're still flying around um what has been the most amazing thing for you to have come out of um the olympics uh, since that that amazing routine um i mean i've just been given so many different opportunities and it, 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 i think i did an australian tour which was amazing that was that was just phenomenal um so i went from Western Australia all the way across the other end and then down to Tasmania. Um, and I did that. Um, I've worked with the UEG as a technical expert for some years and I've, and I've been doing more work with those. Um, and I really like helping like the developing countries. Like I've had quite a bit of um, work with, done quite a bit of work with Turkey. Uh, and Turkey, uh, I, Turkey are the ones to watch people. They really are the ones to watch. watch some of their juniors coming through are phenomenal. Um, and just getting to work with some of the different nations, it's, just, it's been brilliant. Um, the French just trapped me like, I think I was the first coach to go over and work with, at work in France for about 20 years. Uh, and I worked with their senior team and their junior team. And I was there for a couple of weeks and they made me part of the French family. Um, and the kit they gave me at the end, um, I've got a bag of it under my thing. I've got all the French kit, all the tracksuits, the gilets, uh, t-shirts the whole lot it was amazing so yeah just the opportunities that's created it's been brilliant oh awesome awesome um before i give uh, um i've got a couple of questions that have appeared up in the in the chat window so i'll i'll, I'll draw from them but before i do that um i'm going to round off this this section of our of our interview with uh, with another ollie share screen so um you can you can sit back and, uh, and enjoy this one paul i'm intrigued <laughs> hi paul
You've been so supportive of me from day one when I wasn't even a gymnast and we were at Northampton, Great Britain, training camp. And um, you took on the role as my coach for the day. Um, I felt like it was really easy to talk to you. You were, made things fun and inspiring, motivating during the training session. And I felt that just sense of security. Um, I lift, you lifted my confidence, um, helped me out on the trampoline, but also how I was feeling around stuff to do with the camp and um, any sort of like pressure I was feeling. So I felt like that support was has been there literally since, <laughs> since like the first training session we ever had together till, um, well, hopefully in the future as well. <laughs> um, yeah, you stuck with me for a very long time, over a decade now. Um, sorry, I haven't retired yet and you have to <laughs> keep dealing with me. Um, so yeah, you've we've gone through amazing happiness and um, those highs, but we've also been through the, the lows together. Um, and every single time you've always been supportive of me as a person before an athlete and a gymnast. So making sure that I was happy doing what I loved to do and enjoying myself. Um, whilst also trying to coach me to be the best I could be and reach my potential on the trampoline, but also help me and support me through my life and um, university, relationships, um, health, everything. So um, you've always been there and I just really want to thank you for that. Um, I think obviously I can't go without mentioning um, the Olympic year and a couple of years leading up into that and like the difficult time that I had and you there to support me and really treated me like um, the way that I really needed that support and on a personal level and, and to be able to drive on the trampoline and just needed that extra little bit of support um, on my personal life. So I really thank you for that as well. And what an amazing thing that we were able to achieve together, which was um, making our dreams to come true, mine going to the Olympics and yours coaching someone to the Olympic Games. And I just think it's, I'm so happy that we were able to share that together and then to, for, for it to turn out the way that it did and come back with an Olympic medal. Um, and yeah, I just think I wouldn't have been able to do, I know I wouldn't have been able to do it without you. And I just thank you so much for helping me to achieve my potential and enjoy it along the way and make it lots of fun. Um, we've had amazing laughs together. Um, I obviously can't mention all of them, so I'll just <laughs> I'll leave that to your imagination and memories. Um, but yeah, we've had so much fun and I just can't believe that we've, um, it's just been an absolute joy for over a decade. It's been a long time. So um, just thank you. How's that? Yeah, she won't retire. She keeps going. Like, you know, <laughs> we've had, we have had an amazing time. We've, we've had some difficult times as well, some really challenging times. Um, but that's part of it. That's, it's, it's, people see the glitz and the glam, um, you know, in that side of things with the, the Olympics, but it takes a lot of hard work and a lot of challenging times to, to be able to get to that point. And um, yeah, it's been, it's been great, great learning curves. And um, yeah, I think, you know, we've become friends as well now. It's like I've worked with her for over a decade. It's a long time to, to work with somebody and to work closely with somebody as well. You know, like um, it's not one or two sessions a week. It's, you know, we've traveled the world together. So yeah, it's been, it's been a, it's been a great, a great decade. Definitely. Um, uh, everything that you've just said there about, you know, supporting a gymnast and, and, and working with them so very closely, it, it leads really nicely into one of the questions that's uh, appeared in our chat box. Um, Oscar, do you want to um, unmute yourself, dear boy, and uh, uh, ask your question? Sorry, it was uh, a bit away there. Um, I was just wondering, do you still have a coach um, or person work with you as a, as, as a coach? Um, sort of, if you struggle with anything in your coaching with Brian you do have someone that you go to and sort of ask questions and get a bit of guidance from so I have a not within the trampoline world and I don't I don't really talk to anybody in the trampoline world that sounds bad I don't mean it like that I don't I don't have a trampoline um mentor really I did have Tracy Whitaker Smith who was my um mentor and my high performance coach and I talked to Tracy a lot um we do we discuss things but in terms of um mentoring it's, it's we're more I would say colleagues now, as opposed to mentor 
type role. But my mentor was a guy called um, was a guy called John Trower who produced um, Olympic uh, javelin athlete Steve Backley, um, and he was my mentor from a point of view. I've also had Dennis Edwards as well, who was a performance consultant, and it was just somebody to go and talk to about what I was doing, just a reassurance, um, like that what I was doing was the right thing or the wrong thing equally. Um, and yeah, that, that was, it was important to me to have that mentor. So yeah, I've still got, I, I still can now pick up the phone, but another mentor to me as well, who continues to be there, um, but he doesn't really mentor me in a trampoline way anymore is Jack Kelly. Uh, and Jack, um, you know, he's still, you know, he got on the phone to me a couple of months back and he, he always messages me on Facebook and yeah, I just, yeah, Jack's, Jack's been a legend um, and his influence of trampoline was the complete foundations of everything I did. Brilliant, brilliant. Uh, Jack Kelly, of course, the uh, the author of Over and Above. It's uh, <laughs> if if you're a trampoline coach and you've not read that, then um, there's something going wrong. I think uh, that needs to be on your Amazon uh, uh, buy list, definitely. Um, let's move on from the Olympics, if that's right, Paul, um, and just uh, touch on your the rest of your coaching career, which obviously you've heavily focused on. Um, you you wanted an extra challenge in the in the years leading up to the the, the 2016 olympics because <laughs> of course you didn't have enough of a challenge on your hands <laughs> and you took a post postgrad diploma uh, at the university of central lancashire in performance coaching and you also accepted a role uh, of lecturer of sport at sheffield hallam um, in 2015 a role that now sees you as a, a senior member of the faculty um you then further took a Master of Science in advanced coaching practice during the Olympic cycle following Rio. Um, it would appear, dear boy, that continued learning and, and you know, constantly pushing yourself to acquire knowledge and understand uh, your craft um, and, and everything to do in your field of practice is a, is a really important part of your psyche. It is and something where... Um, I love learning and I love, I, I, I just, I just think there's always something that you can do to move forwards or, you know, challenge yourself. And I think the, the day you stop learning is the day that you um, retire or, you know, inevitably pass away. Uh, I think it's, it's something that's, you know, I, I want to continually learn. And I think you, you put pictures up of my garden and I've not picked up, I've not told you, <laughs> I've not told you off about that yet, but um, I use that now as um, a new way of learning something else, like in terms of what works right, what's the right environment and things like that, just because I love learning and I needed something else. And certainly in trampoline now, people tend to come to me as somebody to learn from. Um, and so I needed something else to, to learn. So coaching was the, the route that I went down uh, and really about coaching practice. So, so yeah, that's it, it's part of who I am in terms of continually developing. It's ne it never ends. Yeah, I'm wondering what the next thing is. And of course, alongside all of your your normal, you know, normal British gymnastics coaching qualifications, you were you were recognised by the the big cheeses at, at BG mm -hmm. by being awarded the uh, the international performance coach qualification in two thousand and nineteen. Um, for those of you that don't know, the the IPC award is the the highest level of sports coaching um, that can be achieved in Great Britain, and and one that's based very much on your performance coaching to date um as in who have you produced how many uh, gymnasts of a high level have you consistently produced um, and it's agreed upon by a panel uh, of your esteemed peers within the upper echelons of the trampoline community <laughs> uh how did that feel getting getting that bad boy they absolutely grilled me so like i it wasn't easy it wasn't a foregone conclusion that was going to be awarded it i had um an afternoon of um, talking I had to do a technical presentation so um, I think I did half and half at Triff I was going to do that or um, Miller um, and then I had to basically um, so I delivered that to a, a group of coaches and then this panel as well uh, and then I had to do a presentation on an area of specialism so I did coaching philosophy uh, and uh, yeah I just it it was yeah it was tough. It was really tough. But then I was obviously awarded it, which I was over the moon with. We're really happy about that. Really proud moment. Bravo, dear boy. Bravo, bravo. Uh, what What would you say to people who who think that it's okay to attend, you know, one one coaching course and then stay in their own gym within their own little bubble for the next twenty years, and they think that that's the way forwards? What would you uh, What would you say to that kind of approach? 
So if they think that they can just do one coaching course and then produce top level, is that what you mean? Well, um, one coaching course or one one seminar, you know, the, 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 a very sporadic kind of approach to education. It's never going to happen. Sorry. I think it's, you, 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 you know, you've got to continually push things forward because whilst we're sat here now, somebody else is thinking of new ideas and new ways of doing something. And it's like, and you know, it, there's the tr trampoline is going in it, you know it's the equipment's getting better people are jumping higher you're able to do more you know but with that you can't just think well actually i'm going to be able to do more skills on the trampoline because your body's going to have to be better physically prepared so and you need to, there's science around that to understand what you need to do in order to be able to jump higher be more stable and also protect your body so again there's constantly uh, it's constantly evolving um, so if you just think that you can just go on a course now and again, you've got to, you've got to be hungry for it. You've got to be driven and you've got to be prepared to, um, open yourself up to new, new ideas, new approaches, as well as listening to the, the key fundamentals of what you've got to do. I think that's, uh, I think that's excellent advice. Excellent advice. Um, Obviously, thanks to your your prolific approach to coaching and learning and education and, you know, obviously all of the, the amazing results that you've achieved you know, over a really good extended period. You've been the the worthy recipient of a, of a number of prestigious accolades, including and I'll, I'm going to reel off a little list. Um, the 2006 South Yorkshire Young Coach of the Year, 2010 South Yorkshire Elite Coach of the Year. 2011 Outstanding Coach of the Year from British Gymnastics. Um, and then in 2013, you were awarded Master Coach by British Gymnastics. I mean, wow, that's, that's, and that's not even all of them. Um, in, in your opinion, what, what accolade has been the best thing that you've achieved out of coaching? You know, is it, is it an actual award, you know, like a, a nice shiny glass trophy that you've been, you know, plonked on? Or, or is it actually something that's um, unrecorded, you know, a softer kind of achievement that you've simply gained through your participation? Um, it, it's definitely not one of the awards. Um, I, can, I can say that they're nice and everything, but, um, but ultimately it's like the impact that you make on somebody. And I think um, there was a moment where um it was it was christmas a few years ago and uh one of my former athletes who was a very bright but never never actually happened for him um asked just asked if he could come around and it found it brought me a christmas present uh, and i opened the christmas present and it was um a weekend trip to london um show all expenses paid for meal a michelin star meal and things like that and he just said, uh, this is for everything that you've ever done for me, because everything you've taught me from a trampolining perspective, the dedication, the commitment um, and everything I've taken into, into life and I've taken into my new career. Um, and he's got a very successful career now. He's worked at Aston Martin, is, is now heading up an engineering company down in, in Kensington in London. Um, and yeah, I, I see that as if you made an impact that has transferred into somebody's life positively, then that for me is the biggest accolade. Brilliant. Brilliant. He, uh, he, he didn't accidentally give you an Aston Martin, did he? Honestly, he pulled up on a drive in an Aston Martin because he was testing the car. It got all the computers inside and was testing all the uh, traction. And I don't know, I was learning enough about that sort of stuff. Um, and I was like, just leave that on the drive as long as you can so the neighbours <laughs> think I've made it. <laughs> and then he took me out for a run in it. It was great. Went and had some food, and, uh, you know, in one of the local pubs when you could do that. Uh, but yeah, yeah Phil, Phil was, uh, was a great athlete and a great person to work with. Oh, brilliant. Um, you've, you've met so many people, you know, as part of your journey, you know, your, your amazing career has been, uh, um, just been amazing to watch and, and, and to research. You know, we saw in your intro video, you brushing shoulders with people like, you know, Sir Chris Hoy, uh, Lord Seb Co, um, you know, Matthew Pinson, CBE, uh, you know, Professor Robert Winston. I bet he was an interesting chap to talk to. He was, he was, uh, he was very interesting. Who's, who's the most I don't want to say the most famous because that's just a matter of perspective. Um, but who's the most interesting person that that has a you know um, a public face? Um, who's the most interesting person that you've met through your through your time? Um, I would say one of the most interesting people that I met to talk to in in, in sort of like a good length of time was Mo Farah, um, and Mo Farah was a, was just he he was legendary. He was really great and. Um, the way he was with the other athletes and things like that. I just, I just really loved talking to him and also Chris Hoy, um, you know, multiple Olympic medalist. He was amazing, but I can't lie. Um, the Claire Balden interview was a little bit, 
<laughs> special. I loved that. I loved meeting Claire Borden. I love her. So, so yeah, it's difficult. I, I would, I'd have to say Mo Farah in terms of how he was and how he took the time to speak. And, you know, he had more time than people like Claire Borden and stuff at the time because she had to go from interview to interview. But, yeah, he was he was great. Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, if if you had one piece of advice to to give to uh, well, coaches of any age um, and and any level, what uh, what would that be? Enjoy it. Like as soon as you stop enjoying it, and that doesn't mean you're going to enjoy every single training session. Believe me, you won't. But like you know, make it, enjoy it and make it enjoyable. Like make the journey enjoyable. And when ch- when training's hard and challenging. Um, remind yourself of why you're doing what you do like I have a little um, I have <laughs> things like this um, so you're probably wondering what this is that's my passport uh, but if you look really closely it's got the Rio stamp on it and somebody once said to me um, create yourself a little shrine and almost like a memory board as to remember why you're doing what you do and even when it's difficult times you can always come back to that to actually remember why you're doing what you do um you know so so yeah just enjoy the journey and you know for its highs and its lows because they're all valuable well i think that's brilliant advice thank you and i'm sure other people will be uh, will be grateful for that um okay we're we're moving towards our final questions paul you'll be pleased to know the grilling is almost over (laughs) um you've you've invested your time you know and expertise and your passion and your knowledge um into the development of coaches and athletes across great britain and and indeed the world um by being part of some some really important management groups Uh, and again i've I've got a little list uh the british gymnastics national coach ed panel including um being its current chair uh the yorkshire gymnastics board of control uh, again including being their, uh, their technical committee chair uh, English Gymnastics Strategic Team, the British and Scottish Gymnastics Performance Pathway Lead Coach, uh, Technical Expert Coach for uh, International Training Camps for the UEG, the Union of European Gymnastics. I mean, it's literally like going, it's my CV. Um, it, there's so many different things that, that you do. Um, and I know this is going to be a hard question. Uh, if you had to pick one activity within your whole career, um, you know, those sorts of groups or, or uh, being a, a pure coach or uh, being an athlete yourself, um, being a mentor, mentor, all that kind of stuff. What's what's your favourite role? I would have to say um, I really love my role with the UEG and I wish that that was a, a full time permanent role of going and helping coaches and athletes that are in the development stages and I think um, Bryony and he said this a couple of weeks ago um she was like if you could choose any of the jobs like in terms of the coaching jobs I think you'd be junior national coach or work with juniors um rather than seniors she said am I right and I was like absolutely and and it's, it's not that you know I don't enjoy the the seniors and the top end but for me I love those people that are hungry to at, at the top you just, you're tweaking bits and you, you're changing things and you, you you man it's almost like a caretaker you're managing a program but at the junior level you can really make impact and and like i said not just impact on people's um trampolining but also in terms of um instilling sort of like confidence in them and and sort of like making them take responsibility and driving that intrinsic motivation and yeah i, I, I so i would say the ueg if that was an if i could be an international um, sort of support coach I'd love that role <laughs> it doesn't exist though but that's that's what I'd, maybe, I'd like. maybe, uh, maybe you should uh, uh, do what uh, your your secondary school teacher Jenny Boker uh, said if when someone says no you say yes you, should, you need to make that happen Paul maybe we'll see I'm quite <laughs> happy I, I like my job at the university though as well and it's it's close to my home <laughs> and and I really want a dog and I can't get a dog if I'm traveling the world all the time so yeah <laughs> The priorities uh, you, change. I'm 40 this year. Priorities change, don't they? Uh, absolutely. I, I, I obviously haven't haven't hit that age yet. So uh, we'll we'll move on. We'll move on. <laughs> um, you've also worked closely with um, athletes of, of other disciplines, and you've helped produce yeah. uh, a couple of um, freestyle skiers to the last couple of Olympic Winter Games. What is that all about? Uh, yeah, that was amazing. So Ellie Coyander, mogul skier. Um, you know, I coached her for years actually um and she was doing her aerial skills and trampoline and then james so she went to um vancouver yeah vancouver and james machin um who was a um sort of half pipe skier um freestyle skier and i coached him and his brother and helped i actually helped him with 
up with his dissertation and stuff like that as well his brother um so yeah quit working in like on the winter side of sports as well it just gave me a different perspective of like coaching but also like ch- turning literally on, on its head you know the the acrobatic elements of what they were doing because they were doing things off axis um you know and, and not doing things around I like somersault axis and things like that so it challenged me as a coach uh, but yeah I really enjoyed it and I, I worked with the British um uh, aerial skiing team for a couple of years as well just su- supporting them with some of their developments so yeah it was great good fun oh brilliant uh paul i've got one more question but, but and I'll, I'll take one more question from our chat and then we'll then we'll be done um from from one british champion uh, yourself obviously you were you were british champion at some point into back in the day you mentioned earlier on uh, but we'll take a question from another british champion um mr ian ross do you want to uh, un- un- unmute yourself you and ask your question Thanks, Joe. About uh, trampoline equipment. I've got to put my glasses on because I am over 40. <laughs> um, Paul, great, great chat. We've really enjoyed it up here in Cumbria tonight. I'm just wondering, with the development, improvement of the equipment itself, trampolines, do you think we'll see a time where the men, perhaps the, the ladies as well, are competing multiple quadruple somersaults? Or is it really not worth the risk for the tariff? I'll, I'll answer your question in a second, but are you the Ian Ross? Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't believe you went there. I can't believe you went there either. I don't know which one you mean. <laughs> yeah, the old one. Yeah, I'm the old one. As in as in the former Great Britain yeah. competitor? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, sorry, we, Yeah. I used to yeah, watch videos time, of you. Yeah, long time ago, though. Everything sort of passed me, you know, so, yeah. I got, I got video footage of you when I was a developing athlete and, and stuff like that. I, d- I, I probably, I don't know where it is anymore, but, yeah, God, like, it's really a pleasure to meet you. Really Paul, 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interject at that point. Ian and I were having a conversation the other day, uh, and Ian's like, I haven't got any video footage of me, but, uh, and, and it's going to be sitting in someone's front room on an old VCR tape. Yeah, we did. Do you know, do you know who's got it? Carl Furrer. So Has he? Carl right. Furrow Furru coached me for a while. So he's he married my old coach, Caroline Arno, who ran genetics. Okay. Right. Team. So okay. Caroline, Caroline's the one that talent spotted me all, all those years ago from genetics. Um, right. So he used to show his videos and you were on the videos. So he's definitely right. got on. So yeah, that's... Okay, we'll touch base afterwards then because I haven't got contact with anybody at the minute. So uh, Grant. I'm sure it was Carl that, that showed me. But yeah, like... Um, I, I honestly think with the way things are going uh, and the development of the equipment, some countries have started to ban quads already. So France has oh, banned right. quads. Yeah, um, they they say it's too dangerous um, currently for competition. They're not. It doesn't mean that they're not training it, uh, but they they banned it from competition probably about four years ago. Right. Um, you've obviously got people like Jason Burnett that have done quad and competed yeah. quad. So there's a couple that have competed at World Cups. Um, if the equipment keeps going the way it is, there's got to be some. For, for me, I think there's got to be some developments more in terms of like the impacts on the body because the bigger the, the skills, the more impact they're going to have on landing. And, you know, we've just got to a phase now where we understand everything what's happening in terms of the impact on the foot and the ankle, the knee joint, the lower back, you know, maximum depression, what's happening. But I, I do think it is going one way. I mean, if you think back to like even 10 years ago, we didn't have men doing five or six multiple triples. And now, you know, it was it started off with like, you know, Moskalenko doing three and then suddenly we've got four and then we've got Dong Dong coming through and, and Tu Zhao, um, you know, Lu Chenglong all doing like five and then you're like, wow. And it's just, and so, yeah, I can imagine it going in that direction potentially in the future. Brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Thank you very much, Paul. That was a, a good answer. Good answer to a very good question. Uh, and uh, and yes, I can confirm he is that, Ian Roth. <laughs> So, so, so finally from me then, dear boy, w- what else, what else is left? Um, it would, you know, appear that you've already conquered the world of trampolining. You've achieved the impossible uh, with an Olympic medal. You've attained the, the, the highest possible ranks, you know, within multiple levels, levels and layers of the sport. You've worked cross discipline. You've achieved accolades and glories. What else could possibly be left for you to, you know, put another tick in, a, in another box? Um, you know, what else is going to whet your appetite looking to the future? I don't know. 
<laughs> I'd really lost. Like it's weird because I had my list for for what I've got to do before I'm fifty. Um, and I'm like I said, I'm going to be forty in May, and um, I've ticked most of the stuff off the list. Apart, like there's a couple of things that that um, aren't on there, but I, I sort of I did it quite quickly. So like my list, I need to rewrite my list again and get some some goals. Um, I think for me, the biggest thing that I'd like to do, I, like I know a lot of people say, oh, do you not want to go and produce another Olympian and, and everything like that. I, it's never been about that for me, really. Um, you know, and I, I've, I've got a couple of other athletes that I'm working with that I'll support. But, um, but yeah, I want to help other people, like maybe experience a bit of what I experienced because, I, you know, I've had an amazing time. It's been phenomenal. Um, and I, 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 the nature of me as a coach is I want to support people to, to move on and develop. So I don't know. We'll see. Maybe, um, I don't know. I, I don't know what the, the future holds, really. Um, I, I think with my role at Sheffield Hallam it allows me to work with other people and work with with coaches from varying sports but um yeah I, I just watch this space I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a dog and retire that's what I'm gonna do <laughs> early retirement no I'm not I'm not done yet I think that there's far, far too much uh, knowledge and potential and passion contained within you for uh, for one dog to be able to control all of that. So um, <laughs> I, I think that we're going to be watching watching the rest of your career with with great I, interest. I'll tell you one thing that I am going to do, and it's um, part of what I want to do is um, and that I'm going to do. Um, I am setting up my own sort of like um, consultancy business where, you know, I can go around and support people and help people. And maybe even put things like training programs together. So say, right, okay, let me have a look at your training program. Actually, if you had, so, so in that sort of form, supporting people, and I'd love to do that full time uh, at, at some point one day. Um, so maybe that's where I'll go in the future in terms of, um, uh, you know, being the, the main sort of support sort of mechanism for, for clubs, for individual athletes, for individual coaches, because um, it's about mentoring, supporting and sharing the knowledge, really. That's what I'm about. Well, uh, I, I can tell you that the kettle is always on at Access in Bristol. So, uh, yeah, you're, you're very welcome to come and, uh, come and share some of that knowledge when, uh, when we're out of this, uh, this funny five minutes that we're in. Um, you'll be very welcome, dear boy. Thank you. Marvellous. Paul, I'll tell you what, I've had, I've had a lovely time. What, what a brilliant chat that was. Um, we have come to the end. Sadly, we're going we, we're gonna, to gonna draw this meeting to a close. So um, on behalf of both myself and everybody, both present in the, in the room here, and of course, all of us here at Axis Trampoline and Gymnastics Club, we will think you're a legend. Well done, mate. What an amazing career you've had. And keep going. Uh, and we'll very much look forward to seeing you again soon. Take it steady. Ciao. Thanks, everybody.